Good morning. And I'm saying good morning because I am taping this at 1.32 a.m. in the morning. Guys, I, guys and ladies, I had such a busy Friday. I had to take my daughter to get a her driver's license. And anybody know when you go into the DMV, uh, you're going to be there for a moment. Uh, I just had a, uh, a busy, busy day. When I got home, I fell asleep. And then, towards the latter part of the evening, I always have a blab session where I go and talk with other YouTubers. And, you know, it's always a good thing to just wind down and chit-chat about, you know, your day's events or your week events or anything everything of that nature and then i didn't get a chance to see um the pre-recorded um taping that i did of the bold and beautiful so i had to leave that and then go and watch that and then i was talking to my aunt about the bold and the beautiful so it was just a mess and i'm still behind but i still wanted to get my um post up even though you didn't get a get a chance to watch it on Friday. You still can watch it Saturday and Sunday, and I will be back on point on Monday. But um, I'm just saying, forgive me, but I'm doing it now. And I want to say the reason why I didn't post a pollen count for Friday, the April first. It wasn't an April Fool's joke, no pun intended. <laughs> but um, I was at the DMV and. Usually when um, it's rained the night before or it's raining that particular day, the pollen count is really low anyway because the rain kind of saturates everything and the pollen is in the air. So the rain kind of clears everything out. So you will always have a low count. I think it was like 600 and something. But um, don't quote me on that. Let me see. I know I had saved it in my phone, but I didn't have Wi-Fi where I was, so I couldn't actually update it. So, for anybody who wanted to know the pollen count for April 1st, which was this past Friday, it was 620. So, and the sufferers were from trees. And it was at high range. It was oak, pine, mulberry, sycamore, and birch. The grass didn't have anything. It was very low. And uh, let me see here. It's my other one. Okay, and the weeds that were affected um, by the pollen was the nettle, the plantain, and sheep sorrel. So that was pretty high. So actually, the pollen count from... Um, March 27th was 1323 in case you were sick that's probably why it was high Monday uh, March 28th it was 120 it was low because you know it had rained and um, Tuesday the 29th was 4107 and Wednesday um, March 30th was 1838 and Thursday um, the 31st was 2,347 and of course today well not today because it's Saturday now but Friday was 620 and that was again because of it had rained so if you wanted that update you got it <laughs> so let's get on to the bold and the beautiful and how they pretty much set things out um they were basically saying the topic for the show was going to be Bill Quinn and Ridge delivering heartfelt uh, expression speeches to um, their children on their wedding day. And then the other one was Liam completes a composite sketch. You know, he was doing that little sketch thing from his memory and he was trying to put it on his computer pad um, of a woman and he's and he's certain she means something to him so he's kind of making a little headway there with still the sketch and just things he's just imagining in his mind and this that and the other but okay let's get right on to it this was april 1st the bold and the beautiful at 1 30 in eastern standard time okay the scene takes place when steffi and rich are presented to the group, meaning they don't came through this little winding path and uh, 
kind of like standing at the foyer for everyone to see them so they can commence going on forward up to where the little arch wedding um, display was sitting and they were going to be walking through a little path and both on each side, left and right, they had chairs for their guests. And, you know, it, it was just a very intimate setting because it really was nobody really there because uh, everything was pretty much short notice. Um, so it only was like Rich, uh, his wife, uh, Caroline, Thomas and Steffi, the minister, Katie and um, Bill. And, and Thomas, if I said him. And that was it. So, you know, it is what it was. And um, they are both are walking down, and Ridge puts um, Steffi in the position where she was supposed to be given away. But the minister or the priest didn't say, you know, who gives this woman, you know, to this man. And, you know, I thought Ridge was supposed to say, I do, but it didn't happen that way. But he just pretty much gave her on over to him and towards Wyatt. And the whole day was very beautiful. It had a very nice, serene uh, background and you know the how why had put everything together was you know very simple but yet peaceful and decorative so um and intimate i would say so we we taken that whole scene um and the little you know images they gave us and we move on we go to Liam. Liam is fran frantically searching the internet uh to match the image that's in his face the image that, not in his face, <laughs> the image that's in his mind and the image that he keeps seeing on the uh, Photoshop um, photos of his wedding to this woman. She's calling herself Eve, but we know as, as Queen. And he's pretty much done stop looking at Quinn's face and he's thinking it's some other face that should be there because his mind is telling him that and the feelings he's feeling our emotions that are coming in and seeking through everything of his being. Uh, so he's just hell bent on trying to figure out these woman eyes. Where does he know these you know, this woman's eyes from? So he's taking in, he's envisioning everything. And, you know, he's just like fixated on Stephanie's eyes. So he's getting real, real close. And I thought today he would, you know, it would be shown to him. He would break out of that frozen um what do you call it memory block that he's having i really thought it was gonna like pop out and we were gonna see him knowing who he was knowing who queen was and he was just gonna be tearing up everything in the house at least that's how i thought it was gonna be and he was gonna just try to dash make a dash for it and um he was gonna you know maybe show up at the wedding but i guess that was a little bit too premature for me but anyway we moving on um it goes to a commercial, then it comes back. Lynn still is fixated on Steffi's eyes and the emotions that he's, you know, fighting with internally. And um, he keeps looking at Quinn's picture and he keeps remembering some things that Quinn has said in her past statements to him. And, you know, he's just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it's driving, it's driving the hell out of him. He's being driven crazy, almost to insanity. And, um, you know, because he feels he knows this woman. He feels this woman is needing him, longing for him, and he's feeling an attachment. But he cannot break this um, block, barrier block he has in his mind. And it was irritating me, like, damn, figure it out, figure it out, you know, something like that. And then the scene leaves him, and it goes to Steffi and Wyatt. Um, scene goes back to Steffi. Okay, where the minister is pretty much starting his officiating uh, process as, you know, telling them why they're here, how he know them, what brought them together, this and that and the other. And Stephanie and um, Wyatt are just looking at each other and just giggling and smiling and, you know, making those little, little eye contacts and stuff. And they're actually holding hands. And um, it goes to a commercial, comes back. We're back on Wyatt, Steffi, and Eric. Eric is giving his grandfather's speech to the bride. And he's telling all these wonderful things about her and how he watched her grow. And, you know, it's every grandfather's dream to see their grandchildren get married and pretty much 
procreate and start their family um, on their own, bringing him, you know, more grandkids, great grandkids in his in his viewpoint. And, you know, he's just um, really getting into it. And then he starts to pull out of his pocket a biblical verse that he wants to throw and share in their wedding um, that would be quite fitting for them. And, you know, he does a real good job. And then it goes on to Liam. Liam is still going over and over over again. Now he's talking out loud. I guess he needs to feel himself, hear the words, and maybe hopefully it'll jog some, something in his mind. He's imagining Quinn, you know, talking back to him when, um, well, he was like when he first got there with Quinn after she had, I guess, secured him into the car and then she just made this plan of action and she took him to the cabin that was like well hidden from you know any other civilians out there in the world it's kind of like a secluded isolated cabin she has him um being held up in and he goes back into thinking you know when he was coming out of his little haze or his concussion you know he's still you know looking kind of dizzy um or feeling kind of dizzy and his uh vision was blurred and he was just, excuse me, uh, reanalyzing some things that she was saying to him. And, you know, he couldn't pretty much ascertain whether it was real or was it a dream or, you know, what was going on. But, you know, she was saying some kind of uh, key points that he's now stressing on in his mind to try to figure out, is this person really there for him or does she have another agenda or pretty much... It, has she kidnapped him and she's trying to keep she's trying to keep him from knowing who he is so he's coming along still treading a little water there he's not where i thought he would be at this point of the game but i mean that's how they wrote it and he's playing his part but i'm really getting tired of it now i need him to uh fall down to the flow and then that knocks his senses back in or I don't know, but I'm like, I'm tired of this role. He needs to come on out because everything else is progressing itself for him. Okay, we move from that point. We go back to Steffi, Wyatt, and Bill at the wedding site. Bill starts to um, give his father-in-law speech. He addresses um, Steffi about, you know, her comings and goings and, you know, her really seemingly being already in the family per se and you know she's a great addition and he loves her and you know he, she, he's welcome welcoming her with opening uh, open arms to their you know clan and you know he's pretty much telling his son he did a good job with the choice of a wife this time and a girlfriend and so we move on from there and then it goes to rich addressing the couple and he gives a, a father daughter speech and you know it's quite um touching and fulfilling um and very emotional and then um he addresses Wyatt just a little bit he's pretty much saying you know welcome to the uh, family it's not like uh you haven't been a part of the family anyway because you know He's just been that type of guy. Everybody know him. Everybody love him. They just don't too much care for his um, mother. Then we go on to a commercial. And then we come back from the commercial. And then we're looking at Liam. Okay, Liam still, you know, hell bent on trying to find who he is, where he is, this, that, and the other. And um, he's still um, trying to complete that composite drawing that he's um pretty much sketched together of Steffi. It's just the hair is different. I don't know if he could have boofed up the hair a little bit more or maybe pinned it up or put it to the side and maybe colored it a little bit more blonde. He probably would have had her fixated right there on the screen and then maybe it would have been pinging something off his brain in ways was getting connected and this, that and the other but, you know, we're still with that still uncompleted type of, maybe if he had the uh, uh, the structure of her cheekbones and something of that. I, I'm just not, 
I'm not even understanding what could jog his memory, except for maybe Queen coming back after the wedding, and he gets going off on her, and he just, you know, gets real, real angry, like maybe stomp around or throw up his hands more or whatever, and then it'll really come back like a big jog of who he is, who he's fussing with, really, and him trying to get the hell out of Dodge, but who knows? It didn't happen, but, um... You know, we go move from there. We go back to Wyatt and Bill. And since it's Queen time to uh, come up to the um, couple and give her little speech. But, you know, uh, Bill goes over to Wyatt and says, you know, uh, I don't know. Is your, your, your mother going to cut up? You know, should we even let her up this far uh, towards us? Because I, I, don't, I don't trust her. I, 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 don't, I don't trust the man. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, Dad, sit, go back in, on, over there and, and, and behave. She's fine. She has no reason to, um, what do you call it, uh, start a, a, a scene negatively. She's, this is what she wants. She, she basically wants us to be married, so chill. She's fine. So he gone back into his little position where he's supposed to be. And then the scene goes where Quinn hurriedly comes up there to where they are and of course she's excited you know she's giving her little speech to her son as well as to Steffi and welcoming her into the family and this that and the other but it was a strange situation because it's like she was giving them kudos and everything and accolades and hoping they do well in their um first year of marriage and made it last forever and all this but it seemed like she was talking about herself about new beginnings and um being with new people and i'm like quinn nobody's gonna ever accept you and wyatt i mean well then again this is the uh soap opera so we could possibly if you came up with liam's baby and even though he didn't know who he was at the time he was acting like a married husband and you know being intimate with you and whoo i don't know how they would even throw a spin on this but if their ideal of keeping Quinn somewhere in the mixture of this uh, um, debacle, it would have to be she's with child. And Lynn, Liam wouldn't want his unborn child to be in prison with the mother and, you know, that whole little thing. And I'm going, I know I'm going too far uh, in the future, but, you know, it's just something that can happen. You know, that's something to think about. So, whew. anyway, she gives her little kudos and everything and, you know, sit her down. And then it goes back to Liam. Liam's still looking at uh, Steffi's picture. And he's sensing, having a strong sense or connection or how they call it, a kinetic type of um, you know, thought ways uh, going to the person that he feels needs to have that same sensation or feeling. And really, you know, we did have that with Steffi in past scenes where it seems like they were trying to have a connection with one another. But she seems to be, you know, somewhat happy and has already accepted um, being Wyatt's wife. And she's not looking back. At least that's what I got from it, you know, by watching the scene. It's like once they left the beach house, everything was solidified. She's not going to look back. She's going to go forward with uh, Liam. I mean, not Liam, um, Wyatt, and she's not going to pay attention um, to if Liam ever comes back or if he don't come back. It's just one of those things. But like I said, if she so quickly can forget about Liam, and for one, we don't have a missing body. We don't have him coming back saying he didn't want her or whatnot. I mean, she kind of could express that they had a, a, a bad rapport with one another prior to him leaving but she don't know he came back and was watching um Wyatt and her in bed together even though they didn't do anything it was totally platonic but just the essence of them being in the bed together you know she had on her little lingerie and stuff you know she too free with her body and you know how people perceive her but uh you know he should have got confirmation you know like got them out the bed and you know got to fighting or whatever they had to do to get 
the right response and the correct information before he just hauls himself on off and do what he got to do. And then, you know, he wouldn't been in that predicament, but that's neither here nor there now. now. We don't gone too far. But um, once, you know, Lynn goes to, you know, fantasizing or sensing or whatever, uh, the connection really has been broken because he's the only one still having those feelings. Stephanie has you know, pretty much got where she need to be. They both done express their vows and everything. And then they go to the minister and he's addressing both of them and commencing them to um, say their vows that they've made up for themselves, uh, for each other. Wyatt says what he has to say is very touching. Stephanie says what she has to say, equally touching. And then they start holding hands, and then the minister says, you know, you can kiss your bride. You know, he pronounced them man and wife. Kiss, you know, they can share their kisses, and that's what they did. They hugs and everything, and they were married today. And that's pretty much was it. Um, I guess on Monday, well, no, that wasn't it. We'll go to a commercial. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, We go back to Lamb. He's acting crazy. Still trying to figure out who that woman is on the uh, computer screen. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I, I skipped this part. It, it should have been before that part. But anyway, let's take it on back a little bit. Let's let's backtrack. Got a little too fast for myself. You know, uh, the minister was telling um, them after, you know, they had said their vows and all of that. Um, where were the rings? And Wyatt went on and told the minister that, you know, they're going to forego their wedding bands, which is, the, you know, the last symbolic meaning of them being married. Um, the piece de resistance, you know, when they just say, I'm going to put that ring on my fiance being a male. And then he do it being, a, she being a female. And that solidified everything. And then, you know, the uh, minister says, you know, he pronounced them man and wife and they kiss. But, uh. Wyatt said they were going to not do that. They were going to get matching tattoos. And I was like, wow, whatever. <laughs> it took me back to a Jay-Z and Beyonce moment because I think they got matching tattoos, but they still had wedding bands as well. So, whatever. Um, and then that's when Wyatt went on to say he has to say a special thanks to his mother for always believing in a union between Steffi and himself because she always wanted them to be together and she fought for them to be, be together and, you know, she cleared the path for them to be together. And I was like, well, yeah, she sure did clear a path and she's been very detrimental to your demise of this wedding and this union coming in future episodes and you're gonna see where she played a very big part of you know having that deception and then you didn't help any Wyatt when you were giving your testimony to your future wife Steffi that you were gonna be truthful and honest and everything and it always will protect her from harm but you know you're not really living up to those words now are you and then, you know, Stephanie's pretty much uh, saying the same thing. But if she were to be honest with herself, she would know that, no, she's not very honest herself either because she just used um, Wyatt as a rebound person because she thought he was, you know, being honest on all fronts of the, um, the courting and the dating and, you know, the engagement when, you know, he had some very important, he didn't know all of it when it first started, this whirlwind of a uh, courtship, but he knew before he um, said he was going to make arrangements for y'all to get married, and then the whole process of speeding it up, you know, it's coming to the beat saying he don't want to wait no more, he want to go on to get married ASAP. You know, the information you found out prior to going to the uh, beach and throwing this information on her, you should have told her what you saw on film of your mother's comings and goings with Liam. And that, in fact, she was the last person to see him. That would have threw up red flags. Like, okay, your mother's not stable. She doesn't like um, Liam very well. And she would do anything to keep him and Steffi apart. You know, but you didn't give that information. You didn't let her decide 
uh, well, no, I'm still not going to be with you, Liam, because you did this, 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 and this. You didn't take the time to find out that, that, and the other. So, guess what? Your brother has been an upstanding guy. He told me the first time that he knew something about you. He helped me try to find you, but you came up short. I'm going to go with your brother and deuces, you know. And then everything would have been all hunky-dory. But since he didn't give Quinn, I mean, why didn't give... Uh, Stephanie, that information, she has the right to um, have her marriage uh, annulled because, you know, she wasn't given information that her husband had and he just failed to give it to her. And it was more so he didn't want to give it to her, so he kept it. It was a deception. So he's not being honest. So they both have um, negatives on their side. And whether they come through it all and decide to still stay with one another... You know, that's the writer's choice. But, you know, it would be a good deal to have an annulment take place. And they step back from the situation. And I guess, I don't know, both men go after courting her again. Me, mm -mm. Liam just need to walk away, go on by his business, and seek therapy. And I would even advise Wyatt to seek therapy. Because he's always going after Liam's women. It, especially when Liam's not necessarily through with any of them. So, we see the track record with Hope. We see the track record with Ivy. We see the track record with um, Steffi. And all of them come from Wyatt not having a mixture of all three of them and their personalities into one woman. Because if he could bottle them all up and make one woman, he would. And that would be his ideal woman. But, you know, who can do that? So, y'all, that was my uh, take on The Bold and the Beautiful for April 1st, which it aired on Friday. And um, we did it on things. So, I hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Y'all review, rate, comment, and subscribe. And we'll be looking forward to Monday's episode, God willing. And hopefully, Liam would have flown the coop and <laughs> got somewhere for safety purposes. And... Um, you know, try to go and confess what had happened to him. You think? But anyway, enjoy your weekend and be safe. Stay encouraged and keep doing you. All right.